Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is July 3, 2020. Good morning, Ava. How are you? Okay, today is uh, we, we're celebrating a feast. The feast of who? St. Thomas, the Apostle. Okay? Who, who, knows, who knows who St. Thomas the Apostle is? Huh? huh, Mia? The doubting one. Okay. That is what he's famous for, right? The doubting Thomas. And in fact, this, uh, this gospel we're reading today is about that incident. That incident where, when St. Thomas, uh, well, first doubted the, uh, the resurrection. Okay, but what else is St. Thomas uh, famous for? Where, where did St. Thomas uh, evangelize? Huh? In India. Okay, in India. So, all of our Indian friends are uh, celebrating also today for uh, the uh, establishment of the Catholic Church and the Catholic faith in India. Okay, so let's read the Gospel and comment on it. The Gospel comes from St. John, chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. Okay? This is the scene where they were all in the uh, upper room, right? And they were still afraid of the Jews. Uh, this was just uh, a few days after uh, our Lord uh, was crucified. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them this time. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it on my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Jesus here speaks about every one of us who have not had the privilege of knowing Jesus face to face. Right? Yet, believe. We believe on the strength of the authority of Jesus who has revealed the Godhead to us and has revealed the truths of the faith to us. Okay? We believe on the strength of that authority of Jesus Christ, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, who came to reveal the truth about the Godhead, the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe because what he has revealed is true. Right? This is the basis of our faith, of our belief in Jesus Christ. And so our, our Lord himself is saying that blessed are those of us who believe even if we have, had, we have not had the experience of meeting Jesus face to face. So we got to be thankful for this blessing of faith that we received through the grace of baptism primarily and which, which we try to enrich in our souls through the continuous expressions of faith, through our continuous study of, of the articles of our faith, through the continuous understanding and growth in the appreciation of the revelation of Jesus Christ, which we have uh, plenty of uh, sources and resources to, to learn from, right? And uh, primarily we learn these things from 
what is what is our uh, first um, uh, resource for learning about our faith? Sabi, huh? Oh, you're pointing to me. Because, okay, me. But what else? What do we study every day? The catechism. Okay, the catechism of the Catholic faith, right? And parents, those of you listening to us uh, in this broadcast, it's something I would encourage all of you to uh, carry out in your, in your own homes. Do not consign or relegate the duty of educating your children in the faith to the parish school of religion. Uh, it's your primary duty to do that. Educate your own children in the faith. Teach them the catechism. Give them the catechism books to memorize. Memorize the catechism. That's the most effective way to do it. And then explain to them what they are memorizing. That's what we do here in our own home. My children memorize one point of the catechism every day. And then every once a week, in our case on Fridays, we tackle the questions that they uh, study in the catechism and I explain to them what those pointers are all about. Okay, But today I want to tackle one other aspect of this faith that we learn from Thomas today. Okay? That expression of his own faith, my Lord and my God, is the very same expression of faith that we express when when do we say that expression uh, my lord and my god in our in our uh, in our lives when do we do that when we huh in the consecration when we go to mass and witness the consecration of the body uh, of the bread and wine to the body and blood of Jesus Christ that is an aspiration that we have learned from childhood to say, right? My Lord and my God, when the priest elevates the host or the chalice, we repeat that uh, invocation, that prayer of St. Thomas. My Lord and my God, as an expression of faith. Faith in the Holy Eucharist. Faith in the real presence of Jesus Christ in the appearance of bread and wine. Okay? So there is that uh, very important uh, philosophical concept that every philosopher understands, the, the concept of accidents, okay? substance and accidents. Okay? That in the host, in that host and in the wine, while we, our senses are seeing, feeling, touching, tasting bread and wine, the truth is, those accidental features of bread and wine are truly in substance the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. When he told his apostles and he told all of us, this is my body, right? Do this in memory of me. He was not mincing words. He did not say, this is sim a symbol of my body. No, he said, this is my body. This is my blood. Right? He did not say, it is a symbol. He did not say, it stands for this or that. Okay? So we have to take Jesus at his word. We have to believe that the bread and the wine that we see and taste and feel is really the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And that is why we have to take very good care of the way we receive our Lord in Holy Communion. Okay? Let's just review the conditions. Okay, We never approach our Lord in Holy Communion if we are in the state of mortal sin. Go to confession first. Clean your soul so that you have a, a, a well-prepared soul that will receive your God in Holy Communion. Second, Let's take care of the manner by which we receive our Lord in Holy Communion. Nowadays, it's fashionable to be receiving our Lord in the hand, standing up. And let me tell you, without mincing words here, let's just get this thing straight, okay? There is always a proper way, a more proper way of doing things. Anything in life has that. And the most proper and reverent way to receive our Lord in the Holy Eucharist 
is to receive him on the tongue and kneeling on your knees. Folks, let's <laughs> let's let's let let's let's put a little bit more common sense into this and let's put a little bit more faith into this practice of receiving holy communion. Okay? Let's always think is my way of receiving my God the most appropriate, the most reverent way of receiving our Lord in Holy Communion. I cannot forget what Cardinal Arinze once said when asked about what's the proper way of receiving Holy Communion. I'll just give you his response. You can find it on YouTube if you're interested to find the entire discourse on this. But he said this, if you really believe that you are receiving your God, why don't you kneel? Why don't you crawl? As though to emphasize that really, there, there, there's nothing more humble. If we can only <laughs> put our faces on the floor uh, as, a, as, as a sign of our humility and, 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 and our nothingness in, in receiving our own God who is coming into us, well, why can we not prostrate, uh, prostrate ourselves in the most humble way to receive Him? Why do we approach our Lord? It, it, it really, in, 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 I don't know how else to put it. Maybe in a cocky way or in a, in a co-equal way, you know, uh, parading ourselves in front of the priest like, hey, come on. Give it right here, you know. We're buddies. <laughs> ah, come on, just give it right here and you take it as though, as though it's nothing. As though it's nothing. I mean, come on, people. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Would you, would you even approach the President of the United States in a very casual way, just walking up to him and say, Hey, buddy, can I shake your hands? <laughs> I mean, I don't think so, right? Uh, I mean... Uh, uh, I mean, of course, I'm not saying that people who approach our Lord extending their hands and standing up are disrespectful. We're only talking here of what is the more appropriate way? What do you think is the more dignified way? What do you think is the most respectful way? If there is a more, why don't you do the more? Why do you do the less? <laughs> and don't give me the thing, well, it's allowed by the church. Well, yes, just like many other things that are being allowed exceptionally, doesn't mean to say it's the best. It's an allowance, precisely. It's not the best. We better make a good distinction nowadays between what is best and what is allowed. Something being allowed doesn't mean to say it's the best. And you can apply this logic and many other things you do, right? Uh, something customary doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. And we don't need to go into many more details about this. But I'd like to really steer in you, my friends, the thinking that if you were really confronted by your God face to face, what do you think is the best way to approach Him, to receive Him in your soul? What is the best? There is always what is allowable. There is always what is customary. But I think the question to ask is, what is the best way? Let's think about it. Let us never be stingy with our Lord. Let us learn to give Him the best. Because doing that effort to give the best in terms of receiving the Holy Eucharist in particular is an expression of your faith. It is an expression of your faith. And then let me just give this parallelism. How much do you love your spouse? How much do you love the people you say you love? What is enough to give your spouse? What is enough in terms of showing your affection to your spouse? Would you settle for what's enough or would you rather do 
what is best. Best. Yes, what is best, right, Ava? <laughs> Think about it. If you really love your spouse, let's just talk about that, right? If you really love your spouse, are you just going to settle for what is allowable, for what is customary, for what is <laughs> the, the, the norm? Or would you rather go out of your way to give your best to your spouse? Because giving your best to your spouse is the best expression of your love for your spouse. Well, let me dare ask you, what do you think is the best way to receive Jesus in you, in the Holy Eucharist? What's the best way? I think you're all intelligent enough to understand that there is a best way. There is a best way to express our faith. There is a best way to express our love for Jesus. Perhaps it's about time we... Think about what we do. We think about how we receive our Lord in, Holy, in the Holy Eucharist. Let's think about whether we really are expressing our faith. Or is it just a token of, uh, of I don't know what it is. Uh-oh. Ava's already irritated. Okay. Hi, Anne. My sister's watching all the way from the Philippines at this hour. Hello, Tita Anne. Okay. Well, anyway... Have a good rest of your day, everybody. And for those of you on the other side of the world, have a good night's sleep now. And happy 4th of July. I can't promise that uh, we're going to be on tomorrow morning. But uh, we'll try. Uh, as I said, we'll try to uh, already do this on a daily basis again. Back into the saddle here of uh, uh, Gospel by Dad. So every morning, uh, I extend this invitation again. Every morning we do this after breakfast. Uh, we, we do a commentary of the gospel, the gospel of the day, and um, because this is the way I teach my children, okay? And I thought, well, maybe some families can also uh, avail of it and learn from it, if you want. I'm making it available here. Okay, everybody, have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. Let's say bye-bye, Eva. Let's say bye-bye. Bye, Eva. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the rest of you are hiding. Hey, Tita Anne is saying hi. Bye-bye.